right to you. We are so glad that you're starting your week off with us here at Hope Today. I'm Anna Schmidt and I'm here with Tom Hollis. And Tom, we've got a fun, hard questions type show today. We do. Um, you know, I love when people ask us hard questions. We shouldn't fear that. We, we should be able to answer them biblically, biblically <laughs> if I could say the word, and we should be able to answer them uh, in a loving way. And today we're going to have Alex McFarland and Bert Harper here. And uh, they've written a book called 100 Bible Questions and Answer for Families, which I think is key as well, that we need to be able to answer these questions so that our children, our grandchildren understand as well. We're going to ask them some tough questions, but also ask them what the lay of the land is like, Anna, when, when people ask yeah. these questions. You know, what's behind their questions right. uh, and, 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 and what, what's what's changed in how people ask questions in this modern culture. Right, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure that you have people in your life that are asking you these hard questions that kind of just make you be like, hmm, I don't know about that. We need to ask a pastor or ask an expert. And then you have your own questions that you want answered. And so today we're going to try to ask some of those questions and fill your mind with so much knowledge that you'll just be ready to go out and share it all with those around you. And then stay tuned towards the end of the program. We have a meaningful Monday story for you about a senior in high school that was proclaiming Jesus at his graduation. We have the video. It's I know that's really very powerful. Incredible. It is. And, you know, it's funny. Jean and I taught uh, 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 Sunday school for like 26 years. And I always said, I'm going to have answers for the students. I'm not going to just say, well, that's it's in the Bible. We just have to believe it. I'm going to have. And I remember one one young lady, she challenged me a little bit. And I was like, as close as I've ever been to saying, <laughs> what's well, in the Bible, you just have to believe it. But you yeah. know, um, it, it's, it's good to have answers, especially for young people. They're asking questions. Yeah, absolutely. And I know even for myself, I host a Bible study in my home on a weekly basis. And the women come with some really tough questions. And you know, there are questions that I don't always know the answer to. And if you face that situation, remember, it's always okay to say like, you know what? I don't know the answer to that, but let's go dig in the word and find out or ask some experts today. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do that <laughs> for sure. Well, you know, there's no denying that the Bible is the most important book ever written. I hope it is to you. And while we should be applying God's word and principles to our daily lives, it can be quite challenging to fully grasp everything at times. It can lead us to having many questions that can be sometimes difficult to find answers for. Well, authors Alex McFarland and Bert Harper address some of these questions that many of us have in their book, 100 Bible Questions and Answers for Families, Inspiring Truths, Helpful Explanations, and Power for Living from God's Eternal Word. Alex and Bert, welcome to Hope Today. Good morning. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have both of you. And I, I feel like I, I, we've got a power packed group of people here today to answer all the questions that anybody <laughs> has ever had. Uh, and, uh, Alex, it's been a while since I've had you on the program here. I remember when we took questions from the audience and uh, you know, it's from the, the viewing audience. That is a challenge. What's it like to just be out there taking questions that from, you know, from just anybody who calls in? Well, oh, first of all, it's great to be with you both, and we appreciate Cornerstone TV so much. And yes, I have, I have very fond memories of being in your studio there. But um, for 15 years now with the American Family Radio Network, and then 12 and a half of those years with Bert Harper, who's become just one of my best friends ever in ministry, we've been doing a radio show called Exploring the Word. And this live radio show is on the American Family Radio Network, four to five Eastern time, three to four central and all across America. And what, what's really cool is we get questions from people all over North America. We've even had questions from Canada and from England uh, and people have come to Christ but we believe the Bible has the answer and the Bible is God's word. Uh, I think compelling lines of evidence prove the Bible is the word of God. And we think more than ever, the people of the 21st century need the eternal truths of God's word. Yes, absolutely. And Bert, let me ask you, you've been a pastor for many, many years and you know, you could sort of just stay in the pulpit and preach to the, the, the folks there, but 
you've kind of put yourself out as well. Why do that and why write this book? Well, people need to know answers and I've, this is more than a cliche. Uh, when answers are not enough, there's Jesus. And uh, that most, an most questions have an answer from a Bible perspective. There's some questions, uh, it says foolish questions avoid. But uh, as pastor and I was always open to people coming and talking. And I was a youth minister for two years and always went on the youth trips. So if you really want to be challenged, it's not adults that challenge you as much as youth and children. And uh, Alex does those youth camps every, every summer. And uh, so listen, uh, after dealing with children and, and dealing with uh, teenagers, I'm ready for the adults. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, before we get you know into what? some of the questions, Alex, let me ask you about that. What is it like with young people? Uh, what kind of challenges are there? Yeah, it's so exciting. In fact, uh, two days from now, I'll be on a plane to Montana for our first of seven youth camps. And we'll, this summer from now till August, we'll have over 1,200 teenagers, middle school and high schoolers in seven camps. I want to say this, young people are hungry for truth. They really are. And there, there's so many, you know, things in our world today. Uh, obviously, people of any age, number one, they need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Bert and I say this on the radio, and we say it in our book, that Jesus is as close by as a prayer. And we have found that people of all ages, but especially young people, they respond. They, they want to know, you know, what does the Bible say? How do we know uh, that the Bible is God's word? So, you know, in our radio show, in our conferences and camps, and certainly in the book, you know, we're encouraging people, especially the church and pastors, give the word of God, equip people to understand and live and even defend that the Bible is the word of God. Because that Jesus, as we all know, Jesus is our only hope for this world today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's dive in. Uh, Bert, you've been hosting this with Alex. I think you said 12 and a half years. What kind of questions do people continue to ask? Well, they're questions that always deal with Melchizedek, the giants in Genesis chapter six. I guarantee you just about every week we'll get those questions. And one of the most common questions, how can we trust the Bible that we have? the canonicity of the Bible. Is some left out? Why did they add the book of James, the book of Revelation, especially when James and Romans seem to contradict one another? So those those questions are, are asked quite often. And uh, after 12 years, I think last week, we got two questions that we had never heard before. And when we get those questions, Alex and I both get really excited. Okay, this is going to challenge us a little bit. But uh, pe the questions, uh, mo most of them are the same. They really are. Yeah. And uh, they're connected. And we have a list of the questions and the people who are asking them, kind of uh, a headline for their question. And a lot of times there'll be seven calls on and two or three will be dealing with the same thing. So if we deal with one, it takes care of the others as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, over, over the years, I've kept a list, and I, now I have a file of about a thousand questions. And guys, I, I completely give God the glory. This book that we did, 100 Questions and Answers for Families, it's in major retailers all across the nation. I mean, uh, it's in drug stores, it's in the major department stores, it's in the bookstores. But uh, let me say this question we've gotten a lot, and Bert, I think you'll remember people ask have i committed the unpardonable sin mm -hmm. and one of the things that you know, i've got i've kind of got the heart of an evangelist i want people to be born again and to know the lord and to have assurance of their salvation and a lot of times the radio show is a little bit academic but it, very soon it gets very pastoral because you can hear people's voice uh, and they want to know, can I be saved? Does God still love me? And of course, the unequivocal answer is yes, Jesus does love you. 
yes, Jesus wants to restore you and forgive you. And, and I would just say to anybody who happens to be watching this broadcast, please believe that the Lord Jesus does love you because he does. If you will turn to Christ, I don't, I don't care who you are, but if you will turn to Christ, he will forgive you. Jesus will save your soul. Jesus will rebuild your life. And isn't that good news for the people of the 21st century? No matter how crazy this world gets or what, a, what our journey has been like, the Bible is God's true word. Jesus is alive and Jesus is as close by as a prayer. People need to know that. And I, we believe that message is for everybody. That's such a good lead in for my question because one of the questions that you have in your book is, what if somebody hears that and they say, well, okay, that's fine. That's your truth, but that's not my truth. Let me, let me enter in on that, Alex. Yeah. Uh, how many times I hear that even yesterday, my wife and I, Jan, we were watching a program and it came up. Oh, this is my truth. Uh, Alex and I go back and I, we'll guarantee you we'll quote the word of God. God's word is truth. It is settled in heaven. Uh, there's no such thing. And so we challenge them on that uh, in a kind way. Uh, people talk about how we answer some of the hard questions. Alex and I both agreed that our job more than just answering a question is to try to understand when that person to be open to the right answer. And uh, sometimes it is difficult but those questions when they're talking about their truth, uh, we challenge them and say, that's not what the word of God says, but mm -hmm. we've learned to do it, I think, in a kind way. Don't you think so, Alex? I think so. You know, we've had people call in. They'll say, well, you know, you have your truth. I have my truth. And, and I'll, I'll ask callers. I'll say, uh, could there be some truths that are applicable for all people? Are there any universal truths that are binding on all people. And very often callers will say, well, no. And I'll say, well, wait a minute. You know, it is absolutely universally true that uh, without oxygen in about 11 to 20 minutes, you will die. Without water in about eight days, you will dehydrate and die. And without food in 70 days, you'll die. So it is objectively absolutely true without oxygen water hydration and nutrition you will die so all people at all times in all places need these things so i said could there be any other truths that are universal to all people because there was a man named jesus and he did something nobody else did virgin born sinless life rose from the dead and this man who alone conquered the grave said you must be born again and so it's funny uh listen we give god the glory we had a call bert you may remember this call probably about three years ago this guy calls into the radio show and he said listen i used to drive in my car and you guys made me so mad i'd get so angry because you're always like talking about the bible and jesus and his voice got a little emotional he said but i want you guys to know after listening for six months he said, I've been saved and I love you guys and thank you for not compromising God's word. We give God the glory. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me let me ask you some other ones because I love how it's set up because you've got uh, some great questions. You've got them in five different categories and then you've got about two, you know, uh, or, or three pages to answer them. One or two to three. Really a, a nice, concise way. Let me ask you a couple of, of them uh, that stood out to me. I've heard this. What if the, there's so many different versions of the Bible? Which one should I use? Which one's true? Which one's inspired? What do you say to that? Okay. Many times they want to make the King James Version the only version that is re real. And uh, we tell them that according to what you can read the Bible, and you find how many of them disagree, there'll be very few. And, and we, we share that. Alex is an expert in that area, and it really helps to have him there to answer the canonicity and how they got into it. But, you know, when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, we bring that up and tell them how they can 
there's in the Old Testament, there's not that difference in the New Testament is clear. So it is good. So it's no problem. Yeah, we're, we're living in a, an age where we have so many wonderful Bible translations and, and apps. You know, it's really easier to tell you the ones to avoid rather than the, the ones that are good. I mean, King James, New King James, New American Standard, ESV, NLT. Um, we do make people aware, like, for instance, and I, I, Bert, I saw one of these over the weekend at a bookstore. Um, there is one called the New World Translation the new world translation that purposely tries to eradicate the deity of Christ. And we warn people about that. But, um, you know, the, the manuscripts have been preserved. Science, archaeology, history, the manuscript evidence is so compelling. Guys, let me say this. I debated one of the nation's top atheists a few years ago. I'm not going to tell you his name, but even this particular atheist, who has a degree from Princeton, he agreed with me. He said, you know, we have to admit the, the manuscripts have been preserved. And, and again, you look at the content of those manuscripts and the content unequivocally brings us back to Jesus who rose from the dead. Yes, absolutely. I've even heard of someone finding the true gospel in the New World Translation. I read, remember somebody's uh, you know, really God prompted their heart to, to find the, uh, the truth in there, but I'm not recommending anybody read that. But let me ask you, will my pet be in heaven? I, we get this question so often here on our Hard Questions show. I'm, I'm kind of tired of answering. <laughs> you ever get like tired of answering a, a particular question? But obviously, uh, I'll just leave the floor to you guys. Will my pet be in heaven? Hey, I, Alex and I kind of, we don't know about that. That's the answer. We don't know for sure. Uh, Alex sure wants his Esther to be in heaven. Let me tell you that. And I had a dog in my childhood. I hope that dog is there. It was a boxer named Sandy. And if it is, Sandy's waiting on me. I, so the answer is we don't know. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> well, you know, the Bible warns about, uh, quote, doubtful disputations. And this is obviously one of those things that we can't be dogmatic about. Um, and Bert mentioned my dog, Esther. See, I have the blessing of having the world's greatest dog. <laughs> but <laughs> let me just say this. Um, Psalm 37, 4 says, commit your way to the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Honestly, I think when we see Jesus, it's going to be so overwhelmingly joyful. We're probably not going to th be thinking about a lot of stuff other than the dear Lord Jesus. However, I will say this. We know there'll be animals in heaven because the Lord comes back on a white horse. The lion will lay down with the lamb. Mm -hmm. It says that the, the infant child will safely play next to the adder's den. The curse will be removed. Now, C.S. Lewis, believe it or not, one of the most brilliant guys of the 20th century, C.S. Lewis and Billy Graham at least were open to the idea that you know, our pets might be in heaven. We don't know, but we do know that we'll be with Jesus and that's going to be the greatest part of heaven. That's great. I'll, I'll, I'll comfort Roxy when I go home. Okay. Uh, I'll make sure she, you know, our cat, make sure she knows. So anyway, go ahead, Anna. I, know, I, I don't know about cats now. Hey, cats, that's questionable. You guys have heard cat. You guys have heard about cat in dog theology, haven't you? Yes, I if you, have heard, yeah, I have heard yeah, that about that. I love that. Yeah. I believe it. If you take care of a cat, that cat thinks it's God. If you take care of a dog, that dog thinks you're God. So, uh, that makes me a dog person, I guess. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Oh, you guys have your dogs and cats. We have guinea pigs that we're hoping to see in heaven someday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, so this is all surrounding the knowledge of the Bible, God's knowledge that we all need to have. If somebody is watching today and they want to know, like, how do I begin studying and reading the Word of God to get to know this amazing God better? How would you direct them? Alex and I get that answer, that question as well. We suggest starting in the book of John. Uh, we really do. The book of John is so clear and so precise. 
and it really introduced you to Jesus. And that's what the Bible is all about. It is his story, and we need to make his story known. And I don't know of another book that does it better than John. So we suggest yeah. starting there. I always do. Yeah. We often tell people if you read three chapters a day, five on Sunday, you'll read the Bible in, in a year. But the Gospel of John is a great place to start. And, of course, maybe in the Old Testament, Proverbs, God's book of wisdom. But we just encourage people, get in the Word. It will change your life. Absolutely. Alex and Bert, this has been so much fun. I really appreciate you, you guys. The, the book is called 100 Bible Questions and Answers for Families. I highly recommend it. It's very concise and straight to the point. Uh, Alex McFarland, Bert Harper, thank you so much for being with us. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. When we have 100 more questions, we'll see you again. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you so much. Well, when we return in 60 seconds, we'll have our meaningful Monday story about a young man who isn't afraid to give Jesus praise. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God. But they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Our Meaningful Monday story today spotlights an incredible young man, Ethan Horsley, who boldly shared about Christ during his valedictorian speech at graduation. The video is gaining much attention on social media and his family says that the responses have been amazing. Today we're sharing just a portion of Ethan's speech. Take a look. Um, and to all, this, to all these graduates, I just want to say that we live in a place where it is really easy to say that you believe this or that you are a Christian, but to really live a life that is surrendered to Him um, is something that takes devotion. It's something that's entirely different from just, you know, just saying it. And I just want to encourage us to all honestly look at ourselves and to say, do I really believe this or do I just say I believe this? Because it's really important. Um, and to all of the graduates, um, the reason I say all this to you today is because as we look past graduation, I know there's a lot of uncertainty and even anxiety about what our future may hold. I certainly have felt it, and I'm sure all of you have as well. Um, but the reason we feel that way is because we we're not meant to go through this life alone. We really weren't. We were meant to go through it with our Creator. And there really is a fullness of joy and freedom found in the presence of God, which far outweighs the pressures of this world. So thank you all, and thank you. Oh, Ethan inspires me to be more bold for Christ. Like when I watched that video, I was struck by just how, how natural he was, how he spoke from his heart and how he really was compelling. And from what I understand, he was, he's at a public school. Yes. And public that school. also we have a connection with CTVN that he's the grandson of the Tunnies. Yeah, uh, Deb and Doug Tunney, who are uh, missionaries that we have supported at various times. They've, they're, they're with YWAM and they've, they've founded three different YWAM centers here in the Northeast. And uh, that is their grandson. And uh, I just, I just love Anna, his boldness, but his calm demeanor right. about everything. He was just so ready to just share and share. And there's a lot more to it. I'm sure you could find it uh, online if you, if you look it up. Ethan Horsley is his name. But uh, uh, just, and again, a public school. And uh, they knew that it was going to happen as well. I don't think okay. they knew the whole content, but sure. they knew the, 
that he was going to speak about his faith. Mm -hmm. We need people who are willing to speak about their faith that are not afraid of what administrators might say. Uh, again, I don't want people to you know, necessarily be, have to be rebellious against their leadership, but people need to stand strong. We've been kind of, that's all been put off in a corner and said, well, that, that's your personal faith, but it is so important that people know that God is real. Right, it absolutely is. And I don't know, every time we have a story here about a young person who's just living for Christ, that's on fire for Christ. I mean, it just, it makes my heart just overflow because we hear a lot of discouraging news, negative news about the next generation. And yet God truly is raising up a generation for this time who will stand boldly. Like we are in a time in history like like never before where Christians are called, we are called to be courageous. We are called to know truth from the word of God. We're called to know who we are in Christ and to live that out, to speak it out. Our world wants to, to hush us up, to, to put that, that bushel over our light. Like I think about that <laughs> little song from Sunday school. And yet God calls us to live out loud for Christ and to make a difference. And, and you know, uh, I think it's a challenge for all of us. Are we gonna live out loud uh, at our job? Are we gonna live out loud in our community? Are we gonna live out loud in our school? Ethan's, uh, you know, his passion is a challenge to all of us. Will we be the one that takes a step? And maybe we get some pushback from it, maybe we do. And we don't wanna be obnoxious. I'm not saying to be obnoxious or anything like that. I'm just saying, take a stand. Christians should not be silenced because of their faith. Uh, people of faith founded this nation. It's not wrong for people of faith to take a stand. So my question to you is, do you have that relationship with Jesus Christ? We've been talking about it the whole program. Uh, Alex and Bert made a, a big point that it's not just about answering questions, that's important but it's much more about do you know the one who has the answers to questions? And most of all, the answers to your life and the answers to the things that, that you are concerned about. Go to Jesus now and say, Lord, I don't know if I've ever made you Lord of my life, but I wanna do it today. I wanna be you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins, come into my life and make me your child. And he will rush to you, just like he did to the prodigal son in that story. And you will find a new hope in Christ today. Have a great day.